Wow, let me say that backwards. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad I left my house at 5.30 this morning from Bossier and drove to spend some time with y'all. Uh, everyone has been thanked, and I just want to thank Chip uh, for making sure, <laughs> not just for your leadership and your passion, uh, but just, you know, we ran into each other in the parking lot when I was leaving the Capitol that one night. And you're like, hey, are you really going forward with that, Bill? I'm like, I, I said, I think God's got it all worked out. I mean, uh, he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called, all right? And, and Chip, I want to thank you for that. I also want to thank him for the practical things like, hey, Ryan, your bill's about to be up. Where are you? <laughs> where are you, Ryan? Ryan, they're wondering where you are. And I was, of course, when you file a lot of legislation, they expect you to be in committee and talk about it. I had no clue when I got here that was the expectation. Thank you for sharing that with me finally, Senator Barrow. You can't just draft 59 pieces of legislation, expect someone else to carry it for you while you're in another committee. Uh, I also want to thank the governor. He's got a heart for these children. Donna, I mean, there's no doubt about it when they speak. They speak from their heart. I've known the governor uh, since the first day of law school in 1996. I got lucky enough to sit by him the first day of LSU Law School where they walk into a room about 10 times this size. It's packed shoulder to shoulder, and they, they greet us by saying, look to your right, look to your left. One of you won't be here in the fall. Thank you and go to class. And I'm thinking, I got this licked. <laughs> This 28-year-old man was sitting beside me. I'm thinking, he's probably on plan B or C. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not the, I'm the nerd. I mean, you know, look at me. So I kind of, hey, what you been doing since you got out of college? And he said, well, well, after I got out of West Point, I was company commander of 82nd Airborne. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I was at the Kappa Sig house. <laughs> I didn't ask the other guy. I said, by the way, who are you studying with this semester? Maybe we have some same classes or something. I'm really smart. I don't know whether they call him your honor at that point or general or whatever, but uh, he has such a heart for children and, and, and he's a hard worker. And I know when you have a heart for children and you're a hard worker, good things happen. God blesses that hard work. And uh, many people say, wow, how are y'all able to get so much done with so much acrimony in the Capitol? I said, our leader is a, is a faithful man. He's a prayer warrior. His wife is a prayer warrior. And uh, God has called him to do great things in a time of turmoil. He'll continue to do that, whether we help him or not. God's will will be done. Um, coincidence has been said a lot. What a coincidence, right? What a coincidence. When I first got elected, I met some foster parents, and I said, hey, I'm going to have a crawfish bowl at my house. Y'all come by and just kind of tell me where we're dropping the ball in the state. And we began to start that dialogue in Bossier Parish. And one of the things that Sage Easter, a foster mom, brought up to me is she said, Ryan, Senator Gaddy, uh, I'm kind of the mom that gets the 17-year-olds because I can keep them after they age out. It's a huge problem. And I said, well, I could just draft a bill to fix it because I'm a lawyer and I read laws. And I'm like, I'll just add to this or add to that, change the 18 to 21. No one will notice. We'll fix this. All right. And so that began the process of calling the Senate staff, drafting the bill, and that long process that starts. And everybody said, you know, this is going to cost a lot of money. We're not going to be able to do it. I said, well, you know, you know God provides a way. You know, and if I'm going to get a no, it's not going to be because I failed to try. It's going to be because every roadblock God put up, I tried to go through it, and it just, we got to it. And a lot of legislation, and the governor knows this, and I know that there's a lot of good bills die in those man made roadblocks, those obstacles from opposition. So we started working on the bill and got it drafted and got it going, and it got money and it got legs, and it was so pretty, just like I was before, <laughs> like in high school, you know. And uh, it really started moving. And people started on both sides of the aisle saying, how could we be letting these children end up in laundromats? We've already invested so much time and attention and treasure into these children. How could we just, just push them off this cliff at 18? Nothing special happens when a child turns 18 at all. And then we began to have a hearing in finance, and that was where the bill was supposed to die. They said, Gaddy, uh, do you have your opening ready? And I said, no, I've prepared a eulogy, <laughs> because I know this is where this bill is going to be buried. And, and then someone showed up at that hearing, really two young women showed up, Hope and Ella. And Ella said today, Ella, would you stand? Ella... <laughs> 
is probably has one of the most touching, tragic stories I've ever heard. And she speaks with such authority. You know, when we go through a bad time, we can either get better or bitter. She's gotten better, y'all. That's a big deal. And as I began to talk to her before the hearing, I'm like, I'm so glad people showed up. I didn't know you could actually ask people to come to hearings like, and support you. I thought, this is great. Ella began to speak, and I began to cry. I began to think about my daughter who's turning 18 in January, and she's a senior, and how she would have to leave her home. You know, she can barely find her way out of our driveway. <laughs> Hope nobody's recording this. And I thought, sweet Ella, you began to talk and you touched my heart. I'll, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget your words. People say, what a coincidence that this well-spoken young lady could tell her story like that. There wasn't a dry eye in the room. What a coincidence. I thought, yes, that's, just, that's like 12 in a row, y'all. Coincidence. And the bill got out of committee. Chairman uh, LaFleur said, this has got to go. Now, before that, we were in health and welfare, and Senator Barrett let everybody know, I'm the only one on health and welfare and finance, so y'all better get this bill out of here. And she did that. Coincidence? I don't think so. It passed appropriations. The chairman actually <laughs> liked the bill. Governor, you might want me to help you with your legislation next year. I don't know, but he actually <laughs> liked it. He actually asked me to put uh, more witnesses up. And I thought, oh my goodness. Coincidence? No, it wasn't. It wasn't a coincidence. And we walked out and we hugged and we're like, wow, this is a big deal. Not only is it passed, but it's funded. And that was all worked out. The governor made this a top priority. And it was a big deal. A uh, really big deal for these children. It's a coincidence. So what is a coincidence? You know, and coincidences are weird because, you know, when I found that I couldn't come yesterday, I asked my older brother, I said, I said would you help me? drive down tomorrow because I'm going to be exhausted. I'm going to write my speech as we drive down. Notice I have no speech because I drove. <laughs> they slept. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Gaddy. <laughs> and you snore, by the way. Um, coincidence. So, so, so I try not to listen when people are on the phone beside me but I just can't do it. And so my brother Robbie is counseling one of his friends, and he says, hey, you know what a coincidence is, man? That's just God trying to be anonymous. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to talk to y'all about today. You know, coincidence is just God being anonymous. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't want the glory. He wants you to be a part of his plan. He wants every one of you in this room just to be a little piece of the fabric he's weaving in the lives of these children. It's no coincidence Ella's here. It's no coincidence Hope showed up and gave us hope. It's no coincidence that we have a governor that's not worried about politics, he's worried about the right thing. You'll face a coincidence today in your life and you'll say, why did that happen? That's just God being anonymous. He just, he just, he doesn't want to be too big in your life till you're ready for him. Ella, God's just being anonymous through you. Did you know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank my brother for not driving because that's when I got the information, okay? <laughs> and last thing I want to talk to you about our state flag. This is a short 45 minute speech that Marquita <laughs> asked me to give. You know, our state flag is very special. It's got a mama pelican on it. That mama pelican is uh, caring for her babies. And the story behind our flag, uh, and Miss Lassane knows this well, because she made me the shirt, Papa Pelican. This mama pelican, she's looking out in the swamp for something to feed her children, because there's, and then she finds out there's no food in the swamp, right? There's just no food. So she comes back to her nest, and she begins to pluck feathers from her breast to feed her children. Living sacrificially, as Romans 12, 1 and 2 calls us to do, being a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. It's just reasonable when y'all are foster parents and in that situation. She begins to pluck the feathers, and there's three drops of blood. There's three baby chicks. The number three is important to us as Christians. You know, three days in the tomb, the Trinity. I could go on and on and on. So our flag represents the goodness of our state because our state is supposed to make the tough decisions, and it's no coincidence. 
that our state is supposed to make the tough decisions for the weakest among us. And when I think about that mama pelican on the flag and all that she died, first I think about Christ and his outstretched arms shedding his blood for us. But the second thing that comes across my mind is the mama pelicans in this room. These foster moms, these foster dads, the workers, Chip, Ella, Hope, Marquita. I used to call her secretary, now I can call her by her first name. <laughs> but all the wonderful people in this room, it's no coincidence you're together. I think I just want to encourage you this morning. That if you, when you, every time you walk by that flag, you see it flying, think about what that mama pelican was doing. She was helping those baby chicks that had no clue what she was doing. They probably didn't even know to thank her for it when they grew up. But it's about sacrifice. So as today, as you go through your day, you know, knowing God winks at you through a coincidence. He's just trying to be anonymous. You know, a skill we all should try to have. But also... Thank, hug, love the mama pelicans in your life because you do not know how long they will be here with you. And they are a very, very rare breed because most animals abandon the weak. We don't do that in Louisiana. Our governor has proven that. Our Senate and our House have proven that. Our secretary has proven that. Chip, Ella, Hope, all the moms that testified and gave their stories. We have hope in Louisiana now. It's no coincidence. So thank you, Governor Edwards, for all your hard work on this bill. Uh, thank you all uh, for everything. Thank you for letting me drive the five hours here. And uh, we appreciate all that you do. God bless you.